dear students as far as ninth standard physics is concerned this year we have five chapters in physics they are motion force and laws of motion gravitation work and energy and so so we are going to discuss these five chapters this year in chapter 1 that is motion we discuss some aspects related to motion the place distance displacement speed velocity acceleration etc in the second chapter also we discuss motion we discuss newton's laws of motion on all the three laws of motion in all the three laws of motion we discuss force because force causes motion in the third chapter see in the second chapter we discuss force in the third chapter also we discuss the force because gravitational gravitation is force which exists between any two objects in this universe and with the help of force by applying force we do work so we are going to discuss in the next chapter work to do work we need energy among the types of energy this year we discuss sound energy see how these five chapters are interrelated so my advice to you is if you learn one chapter in detail that helps to to learn other chapters easy so you can study other chapters easily others uh, why one should have the idea of what are all the chapters we are going to discuss in this academic year students today let me take up the first chapter that is motion if i ask you to give some objects which are in motion you start giving a plenty of examples for objects in motion because you have seen many objects in motion in our in your surroundings for example you can call a flying bird a running horse a moving car flowing water the oscillation of pendulum or oscillating swing or vibrating uh, strings of musical instruments you can quote as many uh, examples as possible there are plenty of examples you can give in all these examples we make out the motion easily just by seeing we say that it is in motion in some cases the motion is inferred indirectly through indirect evidences we infer the motion of objects for example the we can't see the mo moving air the motion of air we cannot see the moving air but we infer the motion of air by observing the motion of leaves and the branches of the tree is it not we infer the rotation of the earth just by observing the happening of day and night we infer the revolution of the earth around the sun by observing which one the seasonal changes seasonal changes is one of the evidences to say that the earth is revolving around the sun students i have been taught in the class that even the small particles which are present in a matter that is atoms they are also in the state of motion the atoms which are present in a substance are in motion in solids the particles are densely packed though they are densely packed they are still in the state of vibration if we consider the electrons which are present in the atom they are also in motion electrons revolve around the nucleus at extremely high speeds 
at different distances from the nucleus. So, one thing it is very clear, from atomic scale, from very minute thing, to cosmic scale, that is planets, stars, heavenly bodies, almost all objects possess motion in one way or the other. So, that is the, that's why we need to study motion. That is the importance of this chapter. Almost all objects in this universe is in motion. So, we need to study motion in detail. The branch of physics which deals with the study of motion is called mechanics. I repeat, the branch of physics which deals with the study of motion is called mechanics. The mechanics have three divisions. They are statics, kinematics and dynamics. Statics is the branch of physics or you can say branch of mechanics which deals with the study of objects which are at rest. Static means at rest. Kinematics and dynamics, they are the branches of mechanics which deals with the study of objects in motion. But one difference is there. In kinematics, we discuss, we study the motion of the object without considering the cause for the motion. What factor is causing motion, we do not bother. We just study the motion of the objects without considering the cause for its motion. Here, we study the motion of the objects along with or by considering the cause for the motion. See, these are the three branches though of mechanics, statics, kinematics and dynamics. Here students, let, let us be specific. What exactly motion is? See, you know, an object which is in motion occupies different positions at different instants of time. As time passes, it changes its Position. The object which is in motion, it changes its position with time. See, if we say only this much, it would become incomplete. What we have to do is, we need to consider a fixed frame of reference. Another object we have to take. See, <coughs> we need to select an object to describe the motion to say whether the object is at rest or in motion, we need to select another object as reference and that is called origin. So let me explain this by considering one example. See, let me repeat the definition of motion once again. Change of position of a body with the time with respect to a fixed frame of reference. That fixed frame of reference you are going to select to describe the motion of an object is called origin. See, let us uh, discuss or uh, let me explain motion in detail by considering one example. Observe children. Am I in motion? Definitely you say, yes, sir, you are in motion. My question is, how come you say that I am in motion or I am moving? Immediately you say, because you are changing your position, sir. How come you say that you are changing, that you, uh, you say that I am changing my position? Just by seeing, is it that? See, in physics we do not consider eyewitness. We need a uh, proof which can be verified. So, how come you say that I am changing my position? For that, we need to select a fixed frame of reference. Let me take the border of this board as reference. With reference to this, before, see, right now my position is A, let it be A. And I, when I start moving, I occupy different positions at different instants of time. As time passes, I occupy different positions. See, it can be very fun. If we take a fixed frame as reference, you can check whether I have changed my position or not. See, when I was at A, my distance 
distance between myself and the border is half meter. Let it be half meter. Now, the distance between myself and the same border is one meter. See, in the previous second, when I was at A, distance between myself and the board, sorry, sorry border of the board was half meter. Now I am at B in the next second, I am at B and the distance between myself and the same border is 1 meter. Now we have a evidence to say that we have done change my position. Earlier I was at a distance of half meter from that reference. Now I am at a different or distance of 1 meter from the same reference. So now we can say, we can surely we can say confidently that we have changed our position. So with the help of reference, not only this frame of the board, any ob other object can be considered as a fixed frame of reference to describe the state of motion. So what is motion? Change of position of a body with the time. As the time passes, the object occupies different positions. With time, with respect to the fixed frame of reference. Dear students, one thing it is very clear. Let me repeat the same. To describe the state of motion of an object, we need to consider a reference point. Next thing. See, we have, have quoted many uh, examples where the objects possess motion. All these, the type, uh, there are broadly we can classify motion into three types. One is linear, rotary and oscillatory motion. In this academic year, we concentrate much on linear motion, that is motion along a straight line. The types of motion, basically we have three types, linear, rotatory, rotary and oscillatory. This year we concentrate much on linear. First we will study the linear motion that is motion along a straight line. Next we will extend our studies to uh, rotary motion. Next thing is motion and rest are relative. Motion and rest are relative. What does it mean? For that, I will consider one example. Dear students, here is a tree. A person is standing beside a tree. And another person is sitting in a moving bus. Another person is here, he is sitting in a moving bus. So, a person is standing beside a tree. And another person is sitting in a moving bus. A bus is moving along the road. See, let us consider the definition. With reference to the person who is standing beside the tree, the tree is not changing position. Is it not? The distance between the person and the tree is constant. It is not changing its position. Therefore, with respect to the person, who is who you are standing beside the tree, the tree is at rest because it is not changing its position with the time. The same tree appears to be in motion. You might have experienced while traveling or while moving in a bus, the outside scenery appears to move in opposite direction. Is it not? For the same tree appears to be in motion for a person who is sitting in a moving bus. Because as the bus moves, the distance between the person and the tree changes. Distance changes. As the, so according to our definition, if there is change in position with time, with reference with respect to a, a fixed frame of reference, it is said to be in motion. So what we can conclude is an object which is at rest, seems to be at rest 
with respect to a reference may be in motion with respect to some other reference. So we can say that the object, the tree is at rest or it may be in motion with respect to this person, this observer. The tree is at rest with respect to this observer, the same tree is in motion. So children, if anybody asks you whether this building is at rest, what would be your answer? You should say it may be at rest or it may be in motion. With respect to the people who are sitting inside the building, it is at rest. A person who is, for a person who is sitting in a moving bus, for him the building is in motion. So to describe the state of rest or to describe the state of motion, we always select another object as reference. So we can conclude that an object may be at rest or it may be in motion. It depends on the reference you are going to select. One more thing we need to understand that is why it is called relative because to describe the state of rest or motion we select another object, another fixed frame of reference. That's why motion and rest are relative. Without the observer, without the observer, these two terms will not have any meaning. So to describe the state of motion or rest, we always choose an object as reference. My dear students, we will continue in the next class. Have a nice day.